Well, I figured you guys would miss me. So, you know, here I am. Especially you. Probably you too. <laughs> but I'm here, okay. Just a quick reminder on the three forms that we graft in, and then you can get ripping and roaring, and you can knock these out, no problem. So on the first page is the table method. Now you can choose any numbers you want to substitute in for x, in theory. Now you, you do want to make sure that they're going to fit on the graph. So obviously we'd want them between negative 10 and positive 10. When we have fractions like this in front of the x, couldn't recommend enough that you pick multiples of the denominator. So I would pick multiples of 4. So maybe I would choose like negative 8. I always choose 0 because it's easy to work with. And then if I was to choose a positive 1 that's a multiple of 4, we could pick positive 4. These are the numbers we're going to substitute in for x, we're going to solve the equation, and then the answer will give us our y. So we have half the coordinate already, negative 8 something, 0 something, and 4 something. So we'll go ahead and substitute these in, so we'll have y equals negative 3 fourths times negative 8 plus 2. We'll have y equals negative 3 fourths times 0 plus 2. And y equals negative 3 fourths times 4 plus 2. We'll simplify these, we'll solve them, and then we'll get our y coordinate. Now here, negative 3 fourths times negative 8, you have a negative times negative, you know that's coming positive. 1 fourth of 8 would be 2, right? 3 fourths of 8, 3 times 2 would be positive 6. So this will come out to positive 6 plus 2, which is 8. So when we <coughs> substituted in negative 8 for x, we got out positive 8. So go ahead and plot that point. That's 8 to the left, and then up 8. There's our first point. Cool. Sweet. The next one, when we substitute in 0, we have negative 3 fourths times 0. Well, 0 times anything is 0. So this just becomes 0 plus 2, which is 2. When we put in 0 for x, we got out 2 for y. So we'll go ahead and plot the point 0, 2. Whoa, nice. And then when we substitute in positive 4, let's see what we get. We have a negative times positive. I know that's going to come out negative. 1 fourth of 4 is 1. 3 fourths of 4, 1 times 3 would be 3. So we have negative 3 plus 2, which is negative 1. When we substituted in 4, we got out negative 1. So go to 4, negative 1. You got your three points, so go ahead and draw a straight line through those points. Whee! Look at us, graphing using the table method. That was so much fun. Oh, if only there were a faster way that we can graph an equation like that. Oh, you mean like slope-intercept form? That's in slope-intercept form. So if we were to graph it in slope-intercept form, remember we start with the y-intercept. It's where it crosses the y-axis. It would start at 2. And then you use your slope to find your next point. Our slope is negative 3 over 4. So from that dot, we would go down 3, right 4. OMG, it's the same line. How fun is that? <laughs> and now I know you're looking at the front and you're like, oh, Mr. Plank, can we just graph it in the form it's in? No. You got to use the table method on the other two problems. Come on. Now on the second page, it's all in slope-intercept form, so that page should go pretty quickly. If you look at number 10, it says y equals negative 3 eighths x plus 10. We start with the y-intercept, the number without the x, and it's positive 10. The y-axis is up and down. If it's positive, you would go up 10. There's our first dot. Then we use our slope, the negative 3 over 8, to find more points. If the slope's negative, we go down and right. So we're going to go down 3, right 8. 1, 2, 3, right 8. Sick! And then we can just draw a straight line through those two points. 
Slope intercept form is probably the easiest form to graph in. It goes nice and quick. And then we've got standard form. Ooh, it's when we have the x's and the y's on the same side of the equal sign, and we solve that by finding the intercepts. So that's gonna be the next one we do. So go to number 24. 4x minus 7y equals 14. So when we're solving problems like this, remember the steps in a textbook would say substitute in 0 for x and solve for y. But if I substitute in 0 for x, it would be 4 times 0, which is 0. So it just goes away. So just write the equation without the x's. We have negative 7y equals 14. Then it would say substitute in 0 for y and solve for x. But again, negative 7 times 0 is 0, and that's just going to go away. So just write the equation without the y's. So we'll have 4x equals 14. We're going to solve each of these equations separately, and it'll give us the x-intercept and the y-intercept. So for the x, it's 4 times x, so we're going to divide by 4 on both sides, and we get a decimal, and that's okay. We get x equals 3.5. We'll come back to that. Over here, we're going to divide by negative 7. 14 divided by negative 7 just comes out to negative 2. So these are our x and y intercepts. Now that flat axis is the x-intercept, and it says it's crossing that intercept at 3.5. That would be to the right because it's positive. 3.5, about there, halfway between 3 and 4. It's telling us that the y-intercept, the up and down axis, is at negative 2. That would just be down 2. And then we draw our straight line through these two points. That's as straight as I can get that line up here. We've graphed in all three of the forms. You're going to be such great uh, practicers of graphing today. And hopefully I come back to a great subnote saying, man, fifth period, unbelievable. They're so good. They worked hard the whole time. They were helping each other out. They tied each other's shoelaces. They were like, oh, uh, I like to read books when I'm done with my math work. And I like to stay quiet because I like to treat others with respect. I hope the subnote says that for fifth period. <laughs> All right, we'll see you tomorrow.